Hello guys, Charles here and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be answering a comment from one of you guys. Remember that's what this channel is for. If you've got something you want to ask, I'm here to answer it. So this one's from Lal Dijan and uh, I chose this one because I think it'll be a useful thing for us to talk about for everybody. So I hope I'm saying that correctly, Lal. Hi, great lesson. Thank you very much. I have one question. I was transcribing some sax solos. Problem occurs when the player plays long lines fast. Even slowing it down doesn't help. How do you tackle long runs while transcribing like piano or saxophone? When I do not get the right notes, frustration sets in so easily. Hee <laughs> hee. Please give any tips on this. One more thing, how do you set music goals? To me, when you see YouTube with so many musicians, including yourself, learning seems like an eternity. Further so because I'm learning from YouTube, there's no order of study, etc. Unlike others who go through curriculum in the music school. Please help, I don't know if it's extended lockdown here in India or otherwise, but for past some time, frustration has reached another level and everything seems stuck. Any plans which you can suggest so that I can stick to it for a while would surely help. Thanks. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that, Lyle. Couple of things in here. We're just going to start with the first bit transcribing today. T to answer your second bit, I completely understand the idea of looking at YouTube and not knowing where you're going. Uh, two things I would suggest. One is find yourself a competent teacher uh, who can just guide you. You don't need to see them every single week, but the world is your oyster now. We've got Skype lessons, Zoom lessons. You can choose any teacher in the world. Find someone to see maybe even just once every couple of months just to keep you on track. Uh, second thing, a bit of a plug is I'm aware of the problem with YouTube. And even though I'm here on YouTube myself, me and my brother are working on a solution for that, which you'll hear more about in the upcoming months. So we are trying our best to, to solve that problem for you. However, today's video, let's talk about transcribing. So transcribing is difficult. It's a really difficult thing and it can be really beneficial. So I've kind of come up with a system for transcribing that works really well for me now and it's based on my own experience as well as learning from guys like Yannick Gwesdahl and Bob Reynolds and Hal Galper and actually just by chance this book which I've been reading recently, uh, Ran Blake, Primus of the Ear, there's a lot in common with the way that Ran Blake suggests listening to music to the way that I transcribe music. There is no different approach for fast bits and slow bits. That's the first thing to say. There's just transcribing. So the first thing you want to do when you're transcribing is decide why you're transcribing. And that's really important because if you're transcribing just because you want to play an impressive solo and post it on YouTube, which is perfectly valid, by the way, that's not me knocking that, then the best way to transcribe is just one note at a time, pause, find it on your instrument, find the next note, find it on your instrument, find the next note, find it on your instrument. That's boring and and it seems really dull at the time, but it's probably the most efficient way, it's just one note at a time and find it on your instrument. However, if you're wanting to transcribe for ear training purposes, then we need a more thorough approach. And again, that's where the advice from, from those great players and this book come in. My method that I use is like a funnel. We've got like macro level stuff at the top and we get really good at the macro level stuff and then anything we're not sure about, we focus on. Anything within that we're not sure on, we focus on and so on and so forth. So there's 10 steps to this. Now, before you start through the 10 steps, you need to choose the right piece. So there's two really important things when you're choosing the right piece. One is you need to choose a piece that you either already know or one that you're willing to listen to for months and you love it enough that you're willing to stick with that. The number one reason transcribing is difficult is because it's boring and we don't see it through. So you've got to choose something that you love enough where you will stick to it. The second thing when you're choosing a piece is choose something that's not only within your ability level, you know, if, you're, if you've just started, you don't want to start transcribing Holdsworth, that's just ludicrous. But similarly, something that's using the kind of language that's useful to you. So again, if you're, a New York jazz player, although there's going to be some benefit from transcribing Holdsworth, you're probably better off transcribing Bud Powell or Art Tatum or someone who's closer to your genre. Because not only are you going to understand the language better because you're kind of bathing in that, you're going to remember what you transcribe because you're actually going to find an application for it. So it's really important you choose the right thing. Now, let's assume you have chosen the right thing. Here's your 10 steps to transcription. So first thing is you're gonna to listen to the song on repeat and you're gonna sing along. And you're gonna do this for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're gonna do this until you feel you pretty much know the song. Now you're not gonna be able to sing every single note. There's gonna be fast bits where you just go like Bleh, and you're not really sure what the notes are. But any riffs, any the head of the song, the main tune, 
you you really know and the solos are going to be a bit wobbly and a bit vague you're not really going to know what's going on there but you would start to sketch out the the contour and you're singing along a little bit and you know it roughly goes up at this point and roughly goes down and again you do it for weeks you stick listening to that song for weeks don't go near your instrument with your transcription task of course you're practicing other things just listening and singing along. Step two is you try and play along to the whole song. So any bits that you can play, you try and play. So again, that might be some riffs. You might There might be bits in the head that you can play. You try and play the whole song. You never, ever, ever slow anything down. You try and do as much as you can at full speed the whole song from beginning to end. All the bits, all the solos, you try your best for several weeks. The reason we do this is we need context in order to benefit from transcribing, in order to, to really get your ear trained and improve, you need to stick with the stuff at the right speed, which gives us the right context, within the context of the song at large. So once you feel you've done as much as you possibly can on the whole song, you've got everything you possibly can get done by playing from the beginning of the song to the end of the song and singing from the beginning of the song to the end of the song, you're now going to start to zoom in a little bit more. Remember, it's like a funnel. We've just done the top layer of the funnel, the biggest bit, and we're now moving down a notch. So this would be to listen and sing along to the solos for weeks. And again, if there's several solos, you want to listen to all of the solos. If there's a saxophone, a piano and a guitar, you're gonna loop and listen and sing to all of those solos for weeks. Now let's briefly talk about software. I've always done this in Logic or Pro Tools or Ableton, something along those lines, but amazingly, the exact day you asked this question, Bob Reynolds uploaded a, a video about transcribing and showed the tool he uses. It's called the Amazing Slow Downer. Again, we don't slow down the music, that's not what we're using it for, but it's a great bit of software. It's 10 pounds here in the UK. I just downloaded it because it, it looks so much more efficient than the way I do it. You can create a loop and save it as its own file. So the next time you open up, you choose the song you want and it shows you all the loops you've created. So you'll have one loop for the whole song, one loop for this step, which is just the solos, and the loops can keep getting gradually, gradually smaller as you work your way through. So now you've been singing solo for weeks, you're gonna now try and play along to the solos for a few weeks. Again, there's gonna be some things that you manage to pick out, you manage to get on your instrument, and there's gonna be some things you don't. There's gonna be some things you can sing really well, but probably the fast bits, you're gonna be singing a bit like blah, 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 just the general shape rather than the exact notes within it. That's absolutely fine. So once you've been playing along to the solos for weeks at large, all solos, not just the one you're interested in, you're gonna have a few bits solid there. We're now gonna zoom even closer. We're gonna now just zoom into the solo that you're interested in. So you might have only wanted to learn the sax solo and I've had you playing along to all the other instruments. Again, that's for context and that's gonna help you learning the sax solo. It's also ear training, which is the main benefit if this is the style of transcription you're interested in. Again, if you just wanna do a cool cover on YouTube, one note at a time, that's the way to do it. So step five, we're listening and singing along to our chosen solo. Step six, we're playing along to our chosen solo. So playing along to our chosen solo, we're doing the very best that we possibly can, but there's still gonna be some bits in there that are too fast and we can't figure out. If the entire solo is too fast and you can't figure it out, you've chosen something that's beyond your ability level. You should be able to get at least half, three quarters of the solo done at full speed. If there's too much fast stuff in it, it's currently beyond your ability level. And if again, if you do want to learn that solo, you'll just have to do it one note at a time, pausing it, and you're unlikely to have it stay in your ear. It's unlikely to have a lasting benefit in your playing. Step seven, we're gonna loop the fast sections. So a couple of ways of doing this. You can just chop them out of an audio file and put them in logic and just have the fast bits one after another and do a loop. Or secondly, you can, in this uh, amazing slow downer software, you can cut each one as a separate loop and just loop the first one and sing that one for 10 minutes and just loop the second one and sing that one. So what we're starting to get now that we're zooming into the fast bits, working our way down that funnel, we're hearing the fast bits more frequently and that vague shape that we've kind of carved out in our mind is starting to get some jagged corners. We know we go up to that note definitely, not quite sure how I get to that note, but I, I, I can hear us start here, that's the highest note and then it goes down to this low note and so on and so forth. So we're starting to get some really clear target notes if we hadn't already got those in place on the fast bits. 
but how to get exactly from one target note to the next still probably a bit vague. Remember as well when singing, if like me you're not a singer, even if you knew the notes, it could be too fast for you to sing. So even if I knew I'm trying to go like, uh, trying to sing Donnelly at like 400 BPM, I know the notes of Donnelly but I still can't sing that. The notes just blur into one another. So even if you know the notes, you can only sing it so well if you're not Bobby McFerrin or something like that. So step eight, you're gonna try and play along with those fast sections, of course. Again, you're gonna do that for weeks and you're making sure that you're always revising the song as a whole and the sections that you've been working on so far. We're just adding this to our current practice each step. So step nine, at this point, you should be happy with your playing. You're probably not playing 100% accurately and you know you're not, but you're getting the right contour for the fast phrases. You know roughly what scale they are. You can maybe hear you're not hitting every single note, but you work on it until you think you're 99% you're, you're of the way, 100% of the way. At that point alone, if you're not 100% happy, that's when you can start slowing down the fast sections. And you slow them down as little as possible. So maybe just 5%. And then you listen and sing 5% slower on the fast sections. Are you noticing a pattern here? 5% slower. Try your best to just tidy up what are those passing notes between. And you work on that for a few weeks then try 10%, then try 15%. Once you're at the point where you think you've kind of got everything now, that's the only point at which I will slow everything down. Basically double check my work. Just double check, play those fast bits as slow as I possibly can in the software and go, oh, actually no, that was a flat. I was playing it as a natural or whatever. And I'm just noticing any corrections but not because I need to, because I was happy with the way I was playing it, but it's just like the, the icing on the cake or the bow. I'm just saying, right, I, I'm happy with that transcription from, from my personal satisfaction level, I'm done, but let's just double check, let's just verify my work and you'll notice a few differences and that's cool. And then the final step, you're gonna play along. You're basically now practicing. At this point, because you know the notes, it's cool to slow things down once you know them so that you can build the speed up and, and it's now a technical practice, just like putting a metronome on, that's absolutely fine. But we don't slow down in order to, to hear it better. We hear better by listening to more repetitions over and over and over again. And if that doesn't work for you, again, you're listening currently beyond your ability level. And that's all it is, okay? It's just really, really, really sticking with it. And that's why you need to choose the right piece because think of how many times you'll have listened to this. So when you watch me playing a transcription, hopefully next time you'll think, God, I wonder how many times he listened to that piece of music. Because it's probably thousands of repeats, some of the big songs, some slightly smaller. And then when we get down, of course, to the fast bits, you can repeat those a few hundred times in 10 minutes without even noticing. It just, the time just flies by. So I do thousands of repetitions before I put a transcription up. So lol, hopefully, now that you've got a 10 step plan to follow and you've maybe got a better understanding of just how time consuming transcription can be. You might be able to be a bit more patient, a bit more chilled out when you're doing it now. You just gotta to stick to it and it can take months and months and months. If you've chosen a piece at the right level, realistically, we're probably looking at maybe a month per transcription. There's no point in doing a transcription that's gonna take you two years. It's just a waste of time. You could do 24 transcriptions over a two year period, one a month, that are well within your ability level and more useful to you as a player. If you found that one useful, please do give it a like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and share with any of your friends who could do with some help on their transcribing. And as always, I hope you're all doing very well, getting plenty of practice in, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Roll up, roll up, let me embed a story you'll never forget. A drip, drip, a drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out.